What type of torque wrench do you need? And how many do you need? Maybe we can help. We're going to dig in on torque wrenches today, and none in particular. We're going to talk about electronic torque wrenches, quick stop torque wrenches, uh, about sizes of torque wrenches, and how many torque wrenches you may need for your job or for your application. In case you missed it just a couple of years ago, we did a full in-depth study on click style torque wrenches, how they operate, how they click, how you hear them click, and we actually take one apart. If you missed it, we got the video right above, so make sure to click that. Well, we have a few torque wrenches sitting in front of us here, and we need to determine how many torque wrenches do we need, uh, which torque wrenches do we need, and what type of torque wrench do we need. And really, all that depends on several things. Some of that may just be what you want. Um, take electronic torque wrenches, for example. It may just be that you want an electronic torque wrench, and that's great. There's, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they're great tools. They have a lot of functions, but it may be you don't need one, and you may just get by with a regular old you know, click-style torque wrench or beam-style torque wrench. Now, I don't have a beam style in here or a, uh, you know, a dial style, which typically, if you're setting up rear ends or something like that, that may be where you're getting in more of a, a dial um, but your typical torquing bolts, things like that, is you're going to see a click style torque wrench, maybe a beam style, um, or electronic. Now, let me point out that, you know, this is kind of your go-to half inch, uh, 250 foot pound torque wrench. So this is what you'll see a lot. Um, you'll see this in wheel and tire shops. You'll see at, you know, repair shops, at dealerships, what have you. Pretty standard half inch drive. 20 foot pounds to 250 foot pounds click style torque wrench. So you set the torque by turning the handle here, and then when you put the torque to it, it goes click, click, and you know you're there and you move on. And same thing here, this Sonic torque wrench is a 3 8 drive, and then moving down here to the smaller quarter inch drive on uh, click style torque wrench there as well. And then I have the two Matco, the ETWB 100, which is the 10 to 100 foot pound electronic torque wrench and uh, the ETWB 250, which is the 20 foot pounds to 250 foot pounds uh, torque wrench, electronic torque wrench, but you also get angle detection on here also. And, and there's some other, uh, some other features and perks as well. So pretty cool to have electronic torque, wrench, torque wrenches, but again, not necessarily a must. But why would you need multiple torque wrenches? Well, let's talk about a few of those things. Number one, before I get any further, I don't have any problem with people buying used tools. Uh, you know, whether you're buying a, a used impact driver, whether you're buying a used impact wrench, you know, buy those things. If they work for you, I don't care how beat up they are, I don't care how used they are, great. If they save you some money and you don't mind doing that, then awesome, that's great. I don't mind at all people buying used tools, used wrenches, used ratchets. When it comes to a torque wrench, I would not buy a used torque wrench. You, you just don't have any understanding of where it's been, unless the only way I'd do it would be if I actually had it calibrated. So that leads me to uh, my next major, major tip for you, which is not really major. Whenever you buy a torque wrench, whether it be brand new or whether it be used, I don't care where you get it from, make sure that it includes the calibration card with it. All of them have them, or all of them should have them, and sometimes it's kind of a hard card, sometimes a piece of paper like this that's been printed out, but this details the accuracy of this actual torque wrench. It actually states of you know the parameters that were set and then how well it actually performed during the test. Without this, this is trash. I don't care if it's an $800 torque wrench. I don't care if it's a $50 torque wrench or anywhere in between. It's garbage unless you see a calibration card with it or unless you actually have it calibrated. So again, let me stress that when you buy a torque wrench, make sure it comes with a calibration card. If you're on the, if you're on the tool truck, if you're in the store, say, hey, can I see the calibration card? Look at it, verify everything and say, okay, good to go. Like right here, you can see we've got serial number of the tool. We've got the model number of the tool. We've got 10 to 100 foot pounds. And then it tells us the torque was set at 20 foot pounds. And in actual, we got 19.79, 19.83, and 19.83. So 
within less than 1%, that one's just over 1%, um, which their tolerance rate is at a plus or minus 2%. And there was only actually one that went over 1%. So pretty impressive here on this tool. Uh, but again, very important thing to have right here. And then they even go into the angle settings here as well. So make sure you get a calibration card with your tool or with your torque wrench when you get it. Now also I'll point something else out. Uh, if you're ever torquing you know, left-handed threaded bolts or reverse threaded bolts or nuts, you'll notice here, and this is the case with most torque wrenches, the tolerance difference is different on a clockwise torque of plus or minus 3% versus counterclockwise torque. So clockwise torque is at plus or minus 2%, counterclockwise torque is at plus or minus 3%. So just to understand that, uh, so it's not quite as accurate on counterclockwise as it is clockwise. Now, here's something else. If all you're doing is tires and wheels, so you're doing tires and wheels, and so you're probably going to operate in the life of probably 80 to, let's say, 140. You're doing, you know, your typical um, passenger cars and light trucks. You're probably going to live in the world of 80 to 140 foot pounds, maybe 150, maybe 200 or something, and maybe down to 65 or 70. But for the most part, that's the world you're going to live in right there is that 80 to 140 foot pounds. So this cheap old, you know, 20 foot pounds to 250 foot pound torque wrench or the big Matco here, again, 20 foot pounds to 250 foot pounds. Either one of these will be absolutely fine for you. You won't need anything else, and it's going to operate in that window with no problem whatsoever. Now, here's where the problem comes in. When, you know, you start in as maybe you're a tire and lube tech, and you're doing wheels and tires all day long, and you're torquing those lug nuts, and then all of a sudden you're doing a great job, and they want to move you in as a mechanic, and next thing you know, you're pulling the intake off an LS engine, and you need to torque a bolt to 89 inch-pounds. So an intake uh, bolt, I believe, is 89 inch-pounds. And by the way, get from inch-pounds to foot-pounds really easy. We just divide by 12. So you're looking at, I don't know, what's that, 7.5 foot-pounds. So now, all of a sudden, you're well below the range of that click-style torque wrench. Not only that, we're at 7 foot-pounds. So when you take a 3 8 drive torque wrench, and again, a typical range like uh, the Matco here, as well as the Sonic, is you know probably 10 to 100 foot-pounds is pretty typical. So 10 to 100 foot-pounds. Well, with this electronic torque wrench, you're down at the bottom scale. No, you're actually below that bottom scale. So that's not going to work at all. So now all of a sudden, when you're doing that intake bolt, you can't be in this window. So now you've got to step down to a quarter inch drive. So now you're looking at having your monster you know, torque wrench, your 250 foot pound torque wrench, whether it be the click stop or the electronic, and you're needing something that goes down to now seven and a half foot pounds. So again, depending on what you're doing, you may need a couple or even several, probably three different torque wrenches. And you're getting along pretty good. And next thing you know, you're needing something that, say at uh, 18 foot pounds. Okay, so you look at that and say, all right, well, 18 foot-pounds, I've got my 3 8 inch uh, torque wrench, and this will go down all the way down to 10 foot-pounds and up to 100 foot-pounds, so I'm well within that range. Well, you have to hold up a minute, because when you look at a click-style torque wrench or a click-stop torque wrench, most of the time, if not all the time, they recommend that you operate in a 20% to 100% window. What's that mean? That means that you really shouldn't be torquing any critical fasteners that's less than 20% of the total value of that torque wrench. So if this is rated at 100 foot-pounds and you take 100 foot-pounds times that 20%, that's 20 foot-pounds. So in other words, you shouldn't be torquing anything lower than 20 foot-pounds with that 10 to 100 torque wrench. You look at that, that's again pretty standard across the board. And so now all of a sudden, when you're getting down into this range at 10 to 18 foot-pounds, this all of a sudden is not a good, uh, a good option for you, a click-style torque wrench. Not just Sonic. This is any click-style, whether it be a, a Sun-X and a 3H drive or whatever it may be. Now, again, the difference is 
On these click style torque wrenches, they use a spring that compresses on a little knob or there's various ways it does it, but when it clicks and that spring is compressing and based off of that is measuring that torque. Well, once you back off of that spring a certain amount down at that lower range, it really doesn't have the tolerance that it does in that 20 to 100%. So that's why they don't recommend you torque anything with a click style torque wrench at below that 20% threshold. With an electronic torque wrench, it's much different. It has a sensor in there that measures it, does not rely on a spring, so it does have that tolerance throughout uh, that, you know, 10 foot pounds to 100 foot pounds, so you're not quite as worried about that. Even though I would recommend still stay on the upper end of that torque wrench, whatever it may be, whether it be the 250, the 100, or even down to a smaller quarter inch drive. So let's just take an LS for example, and I say LS, but this is pretty similar across the board for like your new Hemis as well as even your Coyote motors on the Ford side. Um, but let's say the LS uh, on, the, on the mains, uh, I think the inners and outers are first torqued at 15 foot pounds. 15 and uh, then it goes to 80 degrees and then 51 degrees on the outers uh, and but then like the intake as i mentioned that's 89 inch pounds again that's seven and a half foot pounds and then the harmonic balancer that's torqued at 240 foot pounds so just right there if you're getting into engine building which Again, maybe that's not your cup of tea, but still my point is there's all three of your torque wrench ranges right there. So it may be the case that you need to start looking forward to getting into making sure that you understand that you're going to need three different torque wrenches to do your job effectively. Let me also mention something else about electronic torque wrenches. One thing they are kind of bad about, and we've had multiple, multiple over the years, you'll see that we've got our batteries here in the case and not in the torque wrench. And this again is not per any manufacturer. And I would say, you know, just a common issue with alkaline batteries. And that is, if you're not using this every day, just take the batteries out and put them in the case. By the way, I think it's pretty cool that these Matcos, they have a reverse thread for the back. You just don't accidentally unscrew it. So, you can see it, it tells you which way. But anyway, so when you take them out, there's slots right here in the case, take your batteries out, and then you have no problem with the, uh, the actual torque wrench where it's you know draining those batteries or the batteries going bad. If the batteries do go bad, they're in the case and not ruining your electronics in the tool. So if you're using it every day, maybe a different story, but where most people are, are using these you know, from time to time as they're doing uh, different projects, it may make sense just to take them out and put them in the case. So here we have an LS uh, 6.0 iron block, uh, much the same as any other LS motor, and a lot of your LTs are about the same as well. And we'll just uh, run these bolts down. And just kind of use this as a, an example here. Uh, first pass on these, on the inners and outers, is 15 foot-pounds. And by the way, when you're in angle mode in these electronic torque wrenches, you're supposed to keep them very still and pretty level as well. So I'm going to, got some presets. There we go. So 15 foot-pounds, and I'm going to go ahead and, there we go, 16.2. Go a little slower on this one. So they're 15.1 on that one. And then I can go to my angle, which is 80 degrees on the inner and 51 degrees on the outer. But let me first go ahead. I'm going to torque these outers at 15. There we go. So now we're going to take the outer to 80 degrees. And the cool thing about an electronic torque wrench, rather than having a little additional, you know, dial that I have to have here, I can go, I'm at 46 degrees now, 
go get another bite on this. So especially if I'm under a hood, you know, torquing down a head bolt, and then it's not until I engage it again that it starts counting up. So I'm going to that 80 degrees. There we go. So it gives me a vibration and it tells me my total torquing is 66.5 foot pounds after the 80. So here we go, we're gonna go 80 again. There we go. And again, 64.2 foot pounds. Now, same thing on my larger torque wrench, but if I go here, so we've already set, we've already set our 15 foot pounds. So now we need to go an angle and we need to go to 51 degrees. There we go. So now we've got that set at 51 degrees. Go to the outers. Oop, I went past at 54 and it tells me I did 56 foot pounds. I was watching the camera and not the torque wrench. I'm at 50, 51 and 52.4 total foot pounds. So pretty cool about the electronic torque wrenches is that they handle all that for you. Now the problem is if I have, if, if all I have is my half inch drive, you know, 20 to 250 foot pound torque wrench, I can't even start at 15 foot pounds. My scale does not even go that low on my half inch drive. Now my 3 8 drive, I can. Now it's still at the very bottom of this one because there's my 20 and I can go down to 15 But here's the problem. Number one is at the bottom of my scale and you can barely hear this click. Because the higher you go up on the scale, the more that spring compresses and the more, uh, the louder that that click sounds and the, the more you can feel it in the tool as well. So you can barely hear and feel that click, which that's not a huge deal. But that's not my big issue here. Yep, there we go, I've already clicked it. There we go. Is if we're using a torque wrench that's too big for the job, if we even go you know, a few degrees past, look, this is all about, especially on these new, on all these mo motors over the past 20 plus years, everything's gone to, I shouldn't say everything, most things have gone to a torque to yield fastener. And it's all about bolt stretch. Even when torquing bolts, it's all about bolt stretch. In other words, making this like a rubber band to kind of compress everything together, holding the rotating assembly of this motor in a compression type of state to make sure it doesn't come apart. Because as soon as this gets loose, well, bad things are gonna happen. So it's very critical that we hold that in the proper stretch procedure. That's why we see things like, you know, just setting the foot pounds to kind of get the, the bolt to seat. And then you actually provide that 80 degrees or 51 degrees to actually provide that stretch of that fastener. And if our initial or secondary um, approach to that is over torquing that, well, then we get into a catastrophic stage, the same with under torquing as well. So it's very important to have the right tools for the job. This video had no intention of talking about specifically electronic torque wrenches or click stop torque wrenches or sonic tools or Matco tools or Sun X or anything like that, but just to kind of inform you of the different style torque wrenches and why you may need two or maybe even three different torque wrenches and maybe even getting into other things. Now I will say electronic torque wrenches makes it very nice when you are starting to work with TTY or torque to yield fasteners because then you don't have to put things like this and you know set them up and make sure they're locked into place and and uh, you know using your torque wrench to or or pry bar or whatever it is you're using to actually set the angle on that faster. Now it's embedded in the torque wrench, so that makes it a lot easier. At the same time, these things are pretty expensive, so you may need to adapt something like this to your existing click style torque wrench, and that's absolutely fine. But also understand when you're working with click style torque wrenches that there is that lower window that you really shouldn't be operating that torque wrench in because the tolerance is much greater or basically 
it's not as precise at that lower end as on the upper end. Listen, we hope that this helped you. If not, then let us know in the comments. If it did, let us know in the comments. And let us know in the comments if you have some other wild ideas we ought to do. And by all means, if you haven't already, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Have a great day. Keep smiling.